This is the last episode of CICD and Infrastructure as Code. What we're going to do today is recap what we have seen in the previous videos and see what's next. So we'll try to put everything together to see how we can define a CICD pipeline. Hi, my name is Anto and this is Out of DevOps, a YouTube channel for software engineers. This mini-series started with the first episode where um, we were trying to externalize the Terraform configuration. So we used the YAML decode function to move all our variables into a single variable and define that variable as a YAML file. Um, we discussed the pros and cons and the advantages of using that approach. There were different reasons. If you remember, the first one was to apply an approach that is similar to the 12-factor app, so where the configuration is stored with the environment. So um, with a single file, we can easily externalize the configuration in the environment. The second thing was um, about the um, review process of Terraform code. Every single time you have uh, to review Terraform code that you want to establish what is going to be the behavior, looking at what you have in your pull request may not be enough because you can have variable defined in the uh, pipelines or in other scripts because there are many uh, overrides mechanisms in Terraform to pass variables to your Terraform code. And third is the automatic validation that you get for free when you pass a structured variables uh, to a module. So we, we saw that by passing a, a single variable that had all the fill, all the types defined, uh, our Terraform module was automatically validating the, um, the structure of the variable. So we can have a better developer experience when passing values that are not in line with uh, what is supposed to accept. Then in the second video, we saw how to containerize our application. So we wanted to create an immutable artifact to seal all our code and to simplify things like distributing the artifact and uh, promoting the artifact across environments. In the second episode, we also saw how to use the command Terraform Providers Mirror. Uh, with that command, we were able to download all our dependencies, so all our modules and uh, Terraform providers and put everything in the Docker image. Um, this, the advantage of doing this is that we can also um, run our Terraform code in uh, an air-gapped environment, so where you don't have direct connectivity to the public internet. So you can encapsulate everything in this Docker image and then you can run in an environment that doesn't have any access to, uh, to internet. And finally, in the last module, we saw how to use TerraTest to test our artifact. And we also Dockerized our test, so we created another layer on top of the previous uh, Docker image containing our Terraform code just for testing. Uh, the other thing was all our Docker images were based on the Scratch image, so there were no other executable, no other dependencies stored into the, the image, so for a higher uh, level of security. Today, instead, with this last video, we're going to discuss how to move forward, what are the next steps to have a fully defined continuous delivery pipeline. So instead of having specific example, we're going to go through uh, the definition of a generic pipeline and we're going to discuss how to integrate the infrastructure as code into our pipelines. So I did a couple of diagrams. We're going to start from the a typical application pipeline where we go from uh, uh, the Docker image to the build of our artifacts to the deployment in an environment. And then we're going to see how we can do similar things in the infrastructure as code. And then we're going to try to put everything together and see what are the uh, advantages of doing so. So let's start then with the typical application pipeline. So let's assume we have something like this where we define a base Docker image. Our example is based on a Java shop. So on the left side, we have a JDK base image. This one is essentially our base Docker image containing the JDK and few other dependencies to run our Java applications. And then we have in these examples, three services very typical names, uh, there is a preferences service, an account service, and a notification service. So now, every single time there is a change in the uh, JDK base image, the pipeline gets triggered and all these um, services will be rebuilt and new Docker artifacts will be created with the services adopting the new base image. Um, and after the build of the new services, what we're gonna do is we're going to deploy our services in the dev environment. And there is another dependency, which is the configuration. So we have for each one of these services, we have a um, location where the configuration can be fetched. And obviously, if any change happens in the configuration, that also triggers 
the downstream pipeline. So after all these have been deployed, we start our end-to-end -end testing or testing phase, integration testing, uh, depending on how you designed your pipeline. This is a typical approach for how we design pipelines for applications. Now let's have a look at how um, we can apply the same principles to an infrastructure as code pipeline. So all the changes we have done will put ourselves in a very similar situation to the one uh, described before. So instead of having the JDK base image, uh, now we can have a Terraform base image. And then we have a number of modules that depend on this Terraform base image. For example, uh, here we have an IAM Terraform module, a GKE Terraform module, or a Google Cloud Storage Terraform module, and also a Compute Engine Terraform module. All these are upstream dependencies for our provisioning steps. Uh, so um, as you can see here on the right side, we start to see uh, the provisioning uh, blocks where we have GKE dev or the Bastion dev and they also have another upstream dependency uh, with the configuration. So um, as you can expect now in this configuration repos what we can have is our YAML files that define the input variable for all these provisioning steps. And then at the end we have a test of the our configuration. So now, as you can see, these two type of pipelines, the application pipeline and the infrastructure as code pipeline, they follow pretty much the same principles. So we have uh, an artifact that gets created, the configuration that gets passed to the downstream dependencies, and then there is a process of uh, deploying or provisioning. And at the end of that, there is a testing that may or may not break the pipeline. So now, if we want to put everything together, we're gonna have something that is gonna look similar to this. So on the left side, we have our infrastructure pipeline that gets triggered by uh, changes in the base images in the modules or in the configuration. Uh, it then is applied to one environment, is tested. And then at that point, we also trigger the deployment of the application. As we can see on the application side here, we have again the same JDK base image. Everything is triggered by that and then the build of our services it triggers the deployment. So now our deployments can be triggered by three different uh, events. A code change in the configuration of the service, a code change in the configuration of the base images or the images of the service, or a change in the upstream dependencies of our infrastructure as code. So when this happens, now we have our end-to-end -end testing and at the end of that, if everything is fine, we can uh, start the promotion mechanism. With the promotion mechanism, we can promote all our dependencies and all the new artifacts that have been used in this first half of the pipeline to the second stage, which can be the next environment. For example, UAT staging, and then eventually uh, they can go to prod. So now I think it's clear that if we start treating the infrastructure as code as we treat the application code, we can apply very similar techniques like this uh, CI CD pipeline. And we can also start to design things in a different way because uh, what happens in, uh, in this scenario is that uh, you can only deploy the application when uh, the infrastructure test has passed. So you may start designing things in a different way. So having infrastructure that is um, adopting a provisioning model that is blue-green, where you provision an entire new set of infrastructure, you test it, you make sure it works fine, and then you deploy the application on the new infrastructure. And at the end of that process, when the test is fine, you destroy the previous infrastructure and you start again. So in this way, you create a way to fail safe. So every single time there is a problem with your infrastructure, you are never going to affect the one that is serving customers, with, which are the developers, right? So again, we are applying the same principles we do for uh, our application where we test our artifacts and we only deploy the artifact if we pass the test. In this way, we, um, infrastructure as code needs to be provisioned in order to be tested. So instead of provisioning over the old infrastructure, we provision a new set of infrastructure, we test it, and then we promote it. So the other thing is that we need to remember that the CD pipeline, the, the goal of the CD pipeline is that we have automation uh, or for the entire process. And whenever there is a break in the pipeline because a dependency, um, a test fails or something else, uh, we immediately jump to fix the pipeline because it's going to affect the development of everything else, right? So this should be the focus of continuous delivery where 
we can see the entire value stream map and every single one of the engineers can always follow their change from commit to production. So this is it. Let me know how was this uh, first mini course of um, CI CD and infrastructure as code. Use the comment section. Uh, you can find links in the description and other useful material. And thank you and see you soon. Bye bye.